Home Care at USMC here. Before I get started on this next segment, there's a pesky little legal notice that I have to give you. So stand by for that. Okay, now that we've appeased the legal beagles, I've had several people here in Oregon ask me to do a video about the laws that people who carry firearms should know. So I started putting together a list and sort of scripting out how to present it. It soon became apparent that however I made a single video to cover the laws, it was going to be really long and the message was likely to get lost. So instead, I'm creating a series of videos to cover different scenarios and different sections of the law and aspects of the law as it pertains to people who carry firearms in Oregon. I will also be providing legal references that you need in order to look up the laws for yourself and make your own decisions. That legal advice, the disclaimer that you just got, you need to look up this stuff on your own. Verify anything you hear from me or anyone else on the internet. So it's important to make a big distinction here. Law enforcement officers, district attorneys, the courts and jails all belong to the system. And compared to you and I, they have limitless financial resources and experience within the system, not to mention working together within it. Just because an officer can't lawfully detain you doesn't mean he won't do it anyway. Whether knowingly or in good faith, he may simply not understand. While you may be perfectly within your rights, be sure to know that the potential consequences for standing up for those rights could be financially disastrous or even cost you your freedom. Only you can decide just how far you're willing to go to insist on your rights and no one should second guess you on when your line is crossed. Also, if an officer makes a mistake, he's usually covered by this little thing called qualified immunity. You and I aren't. If we make a mistake, we may very well lose our firearms rights altogether or even go to jail or prison. Be careful and remain free. That said, in over three years of daily open carry, mostly in Southern Oregon, but also at the Capitol Building in Salem, in downtown Portland, the local airport, and even in California, although it was unloaded, until recently when they changed the law, I have not had one encounter with law enforcement that was in initiated because of the firearm I carry. A few times I've spoken to police for other reasons, the firearm wasn't even an issue. Then again, I carry in a level 2 retention holster until recently dressed business casual, which you see here, and I'm often asked, are you a police officer? That's changed over the summer as I've been dressing to ride my motorcycle, but still, no negative police encounters. Yet, knock on wood. Even so, just as I always carry my firearm on the off chance that I might need it someday, I always carry an audio or audio video recording device, properly and lawfully used, on the off chance that I have a negative encounter. Recording such an encounter may be worth its weight in gold, save attorney's fees, or even your freedom should a negative encounter happen. Most of the laws I'll be covering are in the Oregon Revised Statutes, or ORS. You can find these laws at the link provided in the video description for typing this URL into your browser window and then selecting the chapter you want to read. Well, that's it for this introductory video. I hope you got a little information out of this video and, I get, and you get a lot more out of the rest of this series with the more detailed information. I'm Open Carry USMC. Have a great day.